This is what 300 Venus flytrap seeds look like. Each one has the chance to give us a completely different looking plant, a new bug eating machine, a one of a kind sweet little monster. And I'm going to show you the entire process of harvesting them, planting them, and what they will eventually look like. So make sure to watch to the end of the video. Last year, before I left Australia, I got all of these seeds in a trader did with a subscriber. This is because I knew I wanted to grow a lot of plants to find the ultimate Venus flytrap. But that begs the question, what does a flytrap seed look like? Who do you get them from? How can you harvest them? And what the hell do I mean when I say the ultimate Venus flytrap? Come sweet, I wanna record. Yeah, yeah. So the very first thing that you will need are Venus flytrap seeds. But the thing is, thousands of people get scammed every single day. These seeds aren't that easy to actually find. And let, let me actually show you guys. Come with me. Literally just check how easy it is to actually get scammed by this. This is Amazon, this is a scam. This is eBay, this is a scam. And this is Etsy, this is a scam. If it's one of those three websites and they have things saying giant, rare, fresh, blue, carnivorous plant kit and it's a Photoshop picture and it has a whole bunch of random catchphrases in it like rare, bonsai, orchid, stuff like that. It is a scam. The best place to find them are from other growers on the Facebook groups. Almost every single country has a dedicated proper carnivorous plant nursery that you can get plants or seeds from. And if you ever get a Venus flytrap that flowers and makes seeds, you can actually harvest them yourself. It's very simple. And let me actually show you how to do that. So inside of this package, we have a Venus flytrap flower stalk, and you can already see one little Venus flytrap seed here. They are small, little shiny teardrop or water drop shaped seeds. And, you know, just like that. They're pretty small, it's about, I don't know, one millimeter or so. So if you ever get seeds and they don't really look like that, just know you most likely got scammed and I'm sorry if that happens. You're gonna get your flower stalk. It will be brown, hopefully. When it's brown, they will crack open. And right in the center, you should hopefully be able to see all those seeds just sitting there ready to be pulled off. So to harvest them is a very easy process. You can just touch them with your fingers. Obviously try not let them fling everywhere like I just did. And you can see they just fall off. Very, very simple, just like that. We probably got like an extra hundred or so little Venus flytrap seeds. And I'm going to pack them away because the wind is starting to pick up. Now that we have our seeds and we haven't been scammed, we can actually start planting them. Let me put you down. In order for us to find the ultimate Venus flytrap, we have to obviously grow these plants well. They all have these three basic things to do really well. They need as much sunlight as you can possibly give them, rainwater or distilled or reverse osmosis water, and the right type of soil. And now all they have to do is get their soil ready, but their soil is very, very specific. If you do this wrong, your plants just won't make it. So I've just brought you guys into the greenhouse, so please excuse the echo. But almost all carnivorous plants come from waterlogged wetlands or boglands or marshes, whatever you want to call it. What that means is that this water that is constantly flowing in these wetlands pull all the nutrition out of the soil. And that is actually why they have evolved to have these little traps here because they catch the nutrition from the bugs that they eat. What this means is that we have to try and give them the same type of soil. Soil without nutrition. Peat. <laughs> And perlite that is spilling everywhere. Okay, let me let me put this down. When mixing your soil, use a ratio of one is to one of perlite to peat. And make sure you actually wet the soil. You don't want the plants that grow in wetlands to now be in dry land. So make sure to wet that soil and fill up your pot. And always make sure you use a plastic pot. Things like terracotta leaches minerals into the soil, which as I just explained, we want to avoid. Now that our pots are ready, it is finally time for the most exciting part. And that is actually planting our seeds up. And hopefully one of these seeds will grow to become the ultimate Venus flytrap. When planting Venus flytrap seeds, it's very different to normal plants. Usually when you plant a normal plant, you'll put like a bean underneath the soil. And then two weeks later, you have a little bean sprout and it's 
easy and that's it and then and then you're done these plants are not like that at all they aren't I, I wish they were they they're so much more irritating and difficult but it's still very rewarding to plant these plants you actually have to sprinkle the seeds on the top of the soil now obviously when you put the seeds on the soil you want those seeds to have really good contact with the soil that's where the spray bottle comes in you actually spray them with this water and this pushes the seeds into all the little cracks and crevices inside of the soil so that they know they can start growing now I know you want to know how the plants look when they start germinating and growing and getting a little bit bigger and I will show you that in this video but there's something I keep talking about the ultimate Venus flytrap what do I mean by that? I am going to start a series comparing all the different Venus flytraps I can get my hands on we will record everything about them their sizes, colors, lengths and even how good they are at catching insects I will record and share all of this information with you and put all this data onto a leaderboard so that we can find the ultimate Venus flytrap. So please subscribe so you don't miss out on those future videos and leave a like so I know that you're interested. And now, let me show you how these guys look when they start to germinate. So when your Venus flytrap seed starts to germinate, the very first leaves that you will see are actually called cotyledons and they're literally there just to give some leaves so that they can capture some sunlight and give some energy to the new baby plant. Obviously, I don't have any like that right now because I, I just planted them. But I do have one that has its very first carnivorous plant, its very first trap. And for you guys, the very first trap is going to be the third leaf it makes. Two cotyledons and then straight after that is going to be a tiny little baby trap that looks just like this. And now don't stress, you don't have to feed these guys. They're obviously tiny and if you touch them too much, you could end up killing them because they're so small. But they will end up catching their own food anyway. These tiny guys will catch small little things like springtails, which are often found on the soil of our pot. The ones slightly bigger than that will catch things like ants and tiny small little bugs that crawl on the soil. Slightly bigger than that, they'll catch midges, small spiders, tiny little flies, until the point where they're actually able to catch really big things like big flies or bigger spiders, even lizards sometimes. It's kind of crazy what they can catch. Bees, cockroaches, slugs. They, they, basically catch anything that walks into the trap and triggers the trigger heads. Even things like beetles, man, like they literally eat anything that is a bug that goes into there. And when they get bigger than that, and if the genetics are right, if you get a plant that has the perfect genetics, you can end up with a plant that has huge traps and they close very quickly and they eat a lot of bugs and they're just basically the ultimate Venus flytrap. 